Big Diesel surveyed the shed. Not bad, he said. I've seen worse. At least you're all clean. The engines gaped. It's not your fault, he went on, but you're all out of date. Your controllers are to scrap you, get engines like me. A fill of oil, a touch on the starter, and I'm off with no bother, no waiting. They have to fuss around you for hours before you're ready. At last the engines found their voices. An inspector had to come and stop the noise. They held an indignation meeting early next morning round the turntable. Disgraceful, rumbled Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, spluttered Henry. To say such things to us, burst out Donald and Douglas. It's to teach him a lesson we'd be wanting. But no one had any good ideas. Diesel purred comfortably. He was being warmed up well before time. An inspector watched a fitter making adjustments. The wind tugged at the inspector's hat. The fitter replaced the air intake cover. OK, mate, he said. Diesel saw his coaches waiting at the platform. He rolled proudly towards them. Look at me, Duck and Stepney, he purred. Now I'll show you something. He advanced a few yards. Then suddenly he coughed, faltered, choked and stopped. The inspector, meanwhile, had seen nothing of this. He was looking for his hat. Can we uh, help you at all? asked Duck and Stepney sweetly. Diesel seethed with baffled fury as they pushed him back to the shed. My hat! exclaimed the inspector as the cavalcade went by. Bother your hat! said the fat controller crossly. The train's due out in ten minutes, and you'll have to take it, Duck. Duck looked doubtful. But when Stepney asked, Can I help him, sir? He felt better. The fat controller was pleased, too, and hurried away almost cheerfully to make the arrangements. The engines and their crews made careful plans. A good start, say, for a friend on a job like this, warned Stepney. So as they backed down, they dropped sand on the rails, rolling it firm with their wheels. Both controllers were there to see them off. Gordon will take over from halfway, said the fat controller. So get the train there. Never mind about being late. Good luck. Don't worry, sirs, smiled Stepney. We'll get there and be early, too. They stood waiting, sizzling with excitement, ready and eager to be off. At last the guard's flag waved. The engines dug their wheels into the sand and gave a mighty heave. Come on, come on, puffed Duck, while Stepney barked excitedly in front. Moving carefully over the points, they reached the open line. Now for a sprint, wuffed Stepney. I'm ready when you are, puffed Duck. Faster and faster they went, till their wheels were turning at such speed that the side rods were merely blurs. Under clear signals, they whizzed through Edward's station and charged at Gordon's Hill beyond. They felt the drag of their fifteen coaches here. It was hard work, but once over the top, the last ten miles were plain running and they swept into the big station in fine style. Hello, said Gordon. You're early. That's one in the headlamp for old Diesel. Have you heard the latest, he chuckled. Diesel had sucked the inspector's hat into his air pipe. That's why he broke down. James says he's sick as boiler sludge and sulking in the shed. Out of date, are we? Ho, ho, ho! And still laughing, Gordon puffed away. Everyone was sad next day when Stepney had to go. All the engines who could came to see him off. The fat controller made a speech, and so did Stepney's controller. Donald and Douglas made everyone sing Old Lang Syne, and then Stepney and his controller puffed off to a chorus of cheers and whistles. Goodbye, Stepney. Come again. Goodbye. Goodbye. But what about Diesel? He'd slipped away the night before. He said goodbye to no one, but left two things behind. The nasty smell of bad manners and a battered bowler hat. <laughs>